In the last two videos, we talked about how to set up the SIR model, either for market penetration or for an epidemic. Now we're going to talk about what to do with it. So let's suppose we have a system governed by these equations. So we're going to make think of it as a business model with a, an attrition coefficient of 1 30th. So that means that your customers will, on the average, use your product for 30 units of time, let's say days. So that's about a month before they abandon it. And the transmission coefficient is 0. 0.000002, which sounds pretty small. What it means is that every customer each day will convince two out of every million potentials to start using the product. All right, and let's suppose that you start off with 40,000 potential customers and 2,100 actual customers and 7,900 rejected. They're not using your product at all out of a total community of 50,000. So what happens? Is it going to grow? Is it going to shrink? How many customers are you going to have in a week, in two weeks, in a month? How can you tell? And the answer is to do things one day at a time. So today, you can figure out how fast things are changing. The rate at which S is changing is minus ASI. So minus ASI works out to negative 168. And I prime, well, that's the 168, that's the ASI, minus a 30th of I, the 30th of I is 70, and that works out to 98. And R prime is a 30th of I, and that's 70. So we know that things that we're losing potentials at a rate 168 per day, we're gaining actives at a rate of 98 per day, and we're gaining rejecteds at a rate of 70 per day. OK, that's today. What about tomorrow? Well, tomorrow, you just if you know the rate of change, you can figure out what's happening tomorrow. Today, we have 40,000 potentials. And we're losing them at a rate of 168 today. So tomorrow, we're going to have about 40,000 minus 168. So that's 39,832. And we just figured out that we were gaining actives at a rate of 98 per day. So the number of actives tomorrow is going to be the number of actives today plus 98. And the number of rejecteds is the number of tomorrow is the number of rejecteds today plus 70 because we're gaining them at 70 per day. Now, this is doing things one day at a time. We could have done things two days at a time. If we did things two days at a time, we would say S two days from now is 40,000 minus 168 times 2. But we're doing things one day at a time, so we always multiply the rate by the time, and the time is one day, and multiplying by one is pretty easy. Great. So now we know how many susceptibles, infected, and recover, how many potentials, actives, and rejecteds we have one day from now. Okay. What about two days from now? Well, we use the SIR equations all over again to figure out how fast things are changing one day from now. The rate at which S is changing a day from now is minus A S I, but not the starting S I. It's S and I a day from now. We plug in the numbers and we get negative 175.1. And I prime tomorrow is A times S tomorrow times I tomorrow minus B times I tomorrow. That's 101.84. R prime tomorrow is B times I tomorrow, 73.76. Great. So we got today and tomorrow. How about the day after tomorrow? Same deal. To figure out what we have the day after tomorrow, you just take what we have tomorrow plus how fast things are changing tomorrow times one day. The way that we got from day zero to day one is the same as the way we're going to get from day one to day two. We do the same for i, we do the same for r, and now we've got new values of s, i, and r. And then we plug those in to get new values of s prime, i prime, and r prime. And then we use those to figure out s of 3, i of 3, r of 3, and we keep going one day at a time for as long as we need to. That way we can fairly accurately project 
what's going to happen a week from now or a month from now or a year from now. We can also do the same thing going backwards. If we want to understand what things were like yesterday, we say, hmm, right now we're losing potentials at a rate of 168 per day, and we've got 40,000, so we must have had 168 more of them yesterday. We've got 2,100 actives, and we're gaining them at 98 per day, so there must have been 98 fewer of them yesterday. We've got 7,900 rejecteds, and we're gaining them at 70 per day, so we must have had 70 fewer of them, fewer of them yesterday. So the same idea can work only with multiplying by negative 1 instead of by 1 to go backwards one step in time. And then we use those equations to figure out how fast things were changing yesterday. And we then take another step backwards to figure out where things were two days ago, three days ago, four days ago, as far back as you want. Whether predicting the future or figuring out what happened in the past, if you go one step at a time, you can do it.